What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zeph War Games. We're here with Michael from Zeph War Games. So you might remember Michael from Caratula's video last year at Nationals because he topped with his Mermaus. And this time at Nationals, he did amazingly well with his, is it called Yangzing Dinos or Dino Yangzing? Yes, full name is True King Dino Yangzing. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yangzing Dino True Kings, whatever. And as you can see, he got the mat and sleeves to go with it. Um, he will be doing his deck profile as he played it. Uh, and then he'll be showing you what the change he's going to make with the new balance that's just hit. So without further ado, uh, Michael, crack us through your matches. How are your matches? All right, so um, my final score for the event was, uh, it was 10 rounds, so I went six wins, three losses, and one draw. Um, Matchups were quite a few zoo, actually. Uh, no, no, surprise, surprise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no Dracos, though. I didn't face any Dracos, apart from towards the end. Um, so we had Metal for Zoo, then like a zombie, zoo, predipart hybrid, uh, Paleozoic, then, believe it or not, Dynamist. <laughs> um, then another, another zombie zoo, another zombie zoo, paleo, um, another uh, pure zoo, then it was kaiju zoo, and the last ones were, must have been another zoo deck, <laughs> lost track at that point, and the last one was uh, true draco zoo. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, oh, um, no, I did face the mirror match at one point, yeah. um, without the young zing, so. Okay, cool. Um, so let's crack in then, yeah? Alright. So, start off the monsters, we're course playing Triple Soul Eating Over Raptor. Uh, the main searcher of the deck gets your plays going. Uh, the second effect is also quite uh, quite useful in the mirror match because it doesn't have to be a dinosaur on your side of the field, it could just be on the opponent's side of the field. So just great for accelerating your strategy. Next we're playing Triple uh, Miscellaneousaurus. It's great for protecting your monsters, also for uh, comboing off in the graveyard as well, and just for setting up your boards. And of course, playing triple baby Saurus and two petit pterodon. Please self explanatory. I uh, decided to go with the two petit because uh, between the two, I think it's argu uh, arguably the, the worst of the two, uh, just because of the attack limitation. So I decided to only go with two. A lot of the times during testing, I found when I was bricking, it was because I was old booking up with multiple babies. And since I wanted to incorporate the Yang Zing engine, I decided to only go with the two, and honestly, I've never looked back. Next up to Dracanlo. Uh, I decided to go with two because, of course, it fits more with the, uh, with the deck's play style. You want to have access to two. Um, another reason is if you happen to draw into one, which, believe me, I always do. <laughs> Um, you still have that one left in the deck, so Miscellaneous Saurus can still search it, still get your synchro plays going, and at the end of the day, it is another fire and another dinosaur for you to combo off with. Uh, next up, one Dog Doggerun. Uh, the only Kaiju I'm playing in the main deck, obviously because it's searchable via Overaptor and your Petit Pterodon, uh, mainly for answering monsters like Dryden and Masterpiece, and there's another combo with this which I will showcase quickly at the end. Uh, one ultimate conductor Tyranna. I did. I, w I was playing two for for the longest time, but I elected to only go with the one for this deck because uh, space was quite tight. I've also been playing like three engines in here, so I decided to only go with the one. It is searchable. It is recyclable via Overaptor, and in the end, what one was all I really needed. Great for finishing off your opponent, and this is your out to huge boards they put up. So that's it for the dinosaurs. Moving on to the True Kings. Um, playing three Lithosagum. Um, Sort of your, your main combo enabler for the deck allows you to destroy the babies, um, search off and swarm the board, and also go into tricking of all calamities. Uh, the other great thing about this is you can check out your opponent's extra, uh, extra deck, uh, allows you to see what options they have available, and also allows you to determine what kind of board to set up because you find out what kind of deck they're playing, such as if you see Metal for Fusions or um, t Totally Awesomes or whatever. Uh, running off the True Kings, I'm playing one Ignimazood and one Barastos. I decided to go with Barastos because even though I'm not playing any waters in the main deck, it's just its uh, destruction effect is just too good. The fact that you can summon any level 9 True King just directly from the, from the deck to the field allows you to quick quicker access to um, True King of All Calamities and it just helps your plays going very much. And Ignimizud obviously because we're playing so many fires and the fact that it doesn't target is very powerful. I think in one of my games I resolved its effect, my opponent thought I was going to banish something from his field and I just banished the uh, Fairy Tale Snow from his graveyard. I just really helped out there. So that's, that's it for the True Kings. Going on to the Yang Zing engine. I'm playing one Chewin, one Bayan, and then two Suwani. I felt like this engine was just the right amount. I didn't want to focus too much on this because this, this engine can make you brick at times. Uh, these attributes are, of course, relevant because of the True Kings. 
uh, with the exception of Chuen, of course. But you need these to go into your Denglongs and get your plays going. But overall, it's been a really great engine. The opponent, a lot of times, don't, don't see it coming, even though it is a well-known part of the deck. Uh, there, are, there were times in game one where I wouldn't show this part of the deck to the opponents just because this, um, this would influence how they would side against me and it just really catches them by surprise in the following games. And there are combos uh, with these cards which I will showcase quickly at the end. Uh, moving on to the hand traps, of course playing the one max C, so we can play at this point. <laughs> uh, two Ash Blossoms, I'm only playing the two just because I didn't have access to the third one, you can absolutely play the third one if you've got the room. Um, it helped very much against a lot of decks, particularly uh, Grass is Greener decks, so 50, 60 cards. And of course the fire attribute is relevant for Ignimazoo. And rounding off the monsters, uh, two drawn lockbirds. I decided to go with this over Ghost Stoker because unlike Ghost Stoker, this can, at times, bring your opponent's turn to a halt against things like uh, True Dracos. It stops them continuing their searches, it stops the um, Zodiac deck resolving the fusion sub combo, you know, discarding the Black Sheep and resolving Emerald, and I just felt that this was a better addition. Issue was that it was a wind type monster and it didn't really combo with anything in the deck, but honestly it really helped out. It's also really good in the mirror match because if your opponent plays a Fossil Dig or a Terraforming and you drop this, you've essentially cut off their turn. They can't then use that Overactor, they can't use that Diagram, and it really helped out. So that's it for the monsters. As you may have just noticed, uh, my deck does not contain Tyranno Infinity. The reason for that because, was because in testing I found that it was a very very dead card a lot of the times. I, I always have this tendency to draw into the damn thing. And even though it is a, is a dinosaur, it is an earth, it does next to nothing, turn one. And a lot of the times I found that um, when, I, when I would have the opportunity to go into it, I would already be doing quite well. So I decided to go to not play it. And in the end, I never looked back. Moving on to spells, of course playing Triple Fossil Dig, the main searcher of the deck. Uh, triple Diagram, and to search that out, playing Triple Terraforming. Allows you to get your plays going, popping the uh, popping the babies, or in some cases the true kings, and just helps you set up your board. Uh, one regeki and one dark hole for uh, uh, board wipes. Uh, so I'd go with uh, these two as opposed to say kaiju slumber, uh, because I found in testing the kaiju slumber often got answered with a ghost ash or a solemn warning, and I really wanted a board wipe that would go through without worrying about those two cards. And I, I am citing the cards as you'll see in a bit, but um, ultimately I decided that these were helpful. There did come one. It, uh, there did come one scenario where I needed to summon a baby and destroy it with Darkhold just to get some plays going, but it really pay, paid off in the end. Uh, two Cosmic Cyclone. This is mainly for the True Draco matchup, getting around their back row and also their field spell without worrying about their graveyard effects, and also can be quite useful in the mirror match, get, um, uh, getting rid of the opponent's diagram. Uh, just an all-round really great card. Uh, one instant fusion. I decided, decided to only play the one because I was, I did have uh, the ban list in mind when I was making this deck and I was trying to figure out how this deck would perform without Norden, so I decided the best way to do that would be to cut instant fusion to one. And it is, it is a one, don't get me wrong, it is a wonderful card, it really helps extend your plays and go into things like Dweller, especially in the True Draco matchup. But ultimately I decided to only play the one and when I drew it it was great, but honestly one was just fine. And the other great thing about this is if I'm playing the mirror match, my opponent resolves Lithosagum, they'll most likely banish the Lawn from my extra deck, and this means I only have one dead card in the deck, as opposed to say two or three copies. And the last of the spells is one Yang Zing Path. This is of course searchable via Denglong, allows me to recycle the engine, and gives the deck a bit of draw power, because that's what I think was lacking with a lot of the builds I noticed, and it really does come in handy. Uh, so that's it for the spells. The only trap card I'm playing is of course Nine Pillars of Yang Zing. Um, Another card searchable off Dang Long, great for getting that first turn board set up and just locking down the opponent's plays. And what I also love about this card is that not only does it set off your Dang Long, but it shuffles the cards you're negating back to the deck. Great if you're negating something like a uh, Kaiju Slumber, so they won't get the graveyard effect. And just an all-round really great card. So that's it for the deck, uh, that's 45 cards. Uh, moving on to the extra deck. Of course playing the one Norden. Uh, two Dang Long. I found two was just the right amount, you, you do want to go into the second one at times, and it's just an amazing card, the fact that it has three effects built into it, and it's got solid defences again to uh, back it up. Uh, one Shambara, this was probably one of the MVPs of the extra deck, the fact that it closed so many games for me, and this plus um, Ultimate Tyranno is eight, exactly 8,000, just what you need to finish the game, so great card. One Naturia Beast. Um, 
For those of you who don't know, um, True King Will Calamities can alter my attributes, allowing me to make this turn one, which is great against pendulum based strategies and uh, true Dracos and things like that. So, great first turn answer for those decks. One Herald of Arclight. Uh, I will explain how to go into this uh, in a minute. It's just uh, this is to do with the Yang Zing part of the engine. Um, really great card, really came up a few times. And um, then one Baxia. Again, this is the combo with the Yang Zing part of the deck. Uh, only went into this a couple of times throughout the event, but it really did uh, put in some work, especially the, um, the first ability to shuffle back cards really came in handy. And the last of the Synchros is, of course, Trishula. Uh, that's it for the Synchros, uh, moving on to the XYZs. Of course playing one, the one Lagia, one Dolka. Um, because I was playing a larger Synchro lineup because of the Yang Zings, I felt like only one of each was necessary, and one of each is all I really needed. Uh, one Dweller, great for the uh, True Draco matchup. One Castell, pretty much a staple for the extra deck. One Tornado Dragon. Uh, Wonderful answer to things like Paleozoics and um, also the Mirror Match as well, being able to hit uh, their Diagram as well, most of the time you wouldn't really use it for that. And the fact that it's a Worm did come up in one of my matchups, uh, Truking um, Lithosagum reviving this to the field really came in handy. And that's it for the Rank 4s, uh, on to Rank 9s, Truking of All Calamities and one Phantom Fortress. I decided to only go with the one Truking of All Calamities because I find that you really don't need the second one. If you're having to go into the second one, you're probably doing something wrong. And of course, you could argue that, that uh, the second one is needed for the mirror match, should they banish this card, but ultimately it never really came down to that. And I like Phantom Fortress for the fact that it can answer multiple threats, as well as cards in the hand as well. So that's it for the extra deck. Moving on to the side deck. It's playing the Kaiju engine, which consisted of one of the Thunder King, one um, Kamungus, and two Slumber. I decided to go with these two because this is of course an Earth, so great for triggering off uh, Lithosagum, and this is a level 9, great for getting your uh, rank 9s. And I just felt like this, in combination with the dog Doggeram, which I was already playing, was just the right amount. And it did come up a few times, and really put in some work. Uh, two Ghost Ogre. This I found putting in, uh, siding in mainly for uh, the Z Zodiac matchup, which is great for when they go to resolve Royal Ball, you just drop this on them. They've lost their monster and they have to maybe burn another resource like a barrage or an Instafusion or to get their plays going. And just all around really great card. One thing I should note, one thing I should mention is that when I was building the side deck, I really wanted to hit as many decks as possible, so a lot of my card choices in the side deck were built to handle more than one matchup. So that's why you you've seen so cards like Ghost Ogre which can hit multiple decks. Uh, then, three Dimensional Barrier. Great for going first against things like Zodiac, you just flip this, call XYZs, that turn basically comes to a halt. And just one full card, busted as hell. <laughs> uh, one Book of Moon. I was playing uh, Forbidden Chalice for the longest time, mainly because of the mirror match, being able to hit something like um, Trick and Mule Calamities during my uh, draw phase, when they would go to activate the effect. But ultimately, I really decided on, on Book of Moon because this is spectacular in the Zodiac matchup. The fact that you can uh, put their Zodiac monster face down when they summon it, they count their XYZ something else on top of that, and it really sets them back quite a ways. And it is quite a versatile card. Going first, you can set it as a trap card, or going second, you, you can use it to answer something like a, a Dryden or a Crystal Wing. It's just all around really great card. Um, the third Cosmic Cyclone, again for the True Draco matchup. Uh, two Twin Twisters. This um, I wasn't too sure about, but ultimately I did find myself wanting it in the side deck when I was against things like Paleozoics. And ultimately I find that like, this card is more useful going second against uh, Zodiac than Cosmic Cyclone, because they are going to set multiple back row, and this just allows you to um, to hit multiple cards at once. The discard does hurt though in this deck, you don't, there's not really anything you want to discard, so that's why I decided to main the Cosmic Cyclones over this. Third drawn Lockbird, uh, when I'm going second against something like True Dracos, did come in a few times, um, did put in some work. And the last card is, of course, Imperial Order. Just honestly, don't know why this card came back, even with that errata, but really, really awesome card. Cool, right. Uh, let's answer the first quick question, which is what you take out for Norden and Instant Fusion. All right, so since I was only playing the one Instant Fusion in the main deck, uh, one of the two cards I'm thinking of putting in is either Book of Moon or Cosmic Cyclone. 
Um, for the reasons I mentioned, uh, I'm probably going to go with the Cosmic Cyclone over the Book of Moon for this scenario. Um, I, just I just find that having access to back row really comes up a lot of times. Even if it's just the one back row that the opponent's set, you just want to answer it and not have to worry about that. But I may try out the Book of Moon. Again, you're, you're quite flexible in this, in, in this sense. I may also uh, decide to put in the, the second Ultimate Conductor Tyranno just to see how it combos off. I do want to keep the monster lineup fairly tight in a way. Uh, for the extra deck, since I am taking out the one Norden, I've decided to go with either Leo or Yazi. Leo did come up a few times. There were so many scenarios where I could make this because I could use one of the True Kings and maybe an Aelo or a Chewin. And I love the fact, the fact that it can't be targeted. And the same goes for Yazi, but um, Yazi is even better because it can combo off into it can answer a threat while at the same time allowing me to come, to come off into something like a Suwani, put a bit more muscle on board. And I just think these are both solid options. So definitely something to consider. Fantastic. Um, now, we will get a combo video done. We're just a little bit pushed for time at this moment in time. Um, but that is Michael's uh, regional deck profile. Now, obviously... Nas national. National, sorry. Yeah, yeah nationals. Uh, as you can see by the, uh, the lovely mat down in front of him and the sleeves. So... You know, we understand that there was Norden and Instant Fusion in there. We wasn't gonna, we weren't gonna lie and show that they weren't in there. That's how he played it. That's how it was, and he's shown you his options for changing them over. Luckily, it was only two cards. It's not like the whole Zoo Engine where you lose about 15 cards. <laughs> um, anyway, um, congratulations to Michael. We will be heading to Euro, so hopefully we'll have uh, updates from that. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and as always, guys, happy, happy dueling. If you like that video, why not check out our other videos available? We've got more deck profiles, pack openings, and of course, duels. And don't forget to click on the most important button of all, that subscribe button, right in the bottom left-hand corner.